Next, let's talk arm lock putters today. Lots of people talking about them. Few pros really starting to make ways using them. I've got the Cobra arm lock putter here. The one Bryson's using, 3D printed. We will talk about the tech of this putter as we go. Because once again, Cobra seem to be really pushing it out there, trying some different things. Let's see who this would benefit. Will it change my stroke? I've got Cyan Putt Lab as well. We're gonna actually do some measured strokes with my putter and this one to see if it actually changes any, any of the dynamics of my stroke. Um, we'll talk about who it might suit and who it might not. Does it really make any difference or is it just another one of these golf fads? So let's kick this off with what actually is an arm lock putter. It's exactly what it sounds like it is. It's a putter that basically touches joins the top of my lead arm as my lead hand is down the grip. How you then put your second hand on, I see Bryson putting standard grip. I quite like standard prayer grip, so I like getting my hands quite level with each other while it sits touching my lead arm. And then I've seen other players reverse it as well. So you can kind of play with the intricacies of what you like in the hold, but the premise is that you are locking this grip up against your lead arm. Now in the comments down below, we will talk about this as the video goes on. Obviously anchoring is banned, so you're not allowed to anchor, have a fixed point where it sticks. Obviously you could say this is a fixed point, but it is moving with this point. Should arm lock putters consider to be banned like anchoring? Um, what do you think in the comments down below? Let me know. There's certainly talk about people saying that maybe it gives an advantage or not. What are your thoughts? Who wants to win this arm lock putter? Give it a go, see if it works for you. If you want to win this putter, you have to be a subscriber to this channel. Hit that subscribe button down there. We need to get to over 3,000 likes, so make sure you hit that thumbs up button. One of you then will win this arm lock putter, as long as you're subscribed. And you need to leave a comment down below saying that you're a good putter or a bad putter. Just let me know what standard you are as a putter. Do those three things, you're entered for a chance to win an arm lock putter. So initial thoughts when I first got this putter come through um, is it does feel really, really nice. And I mean the arm lock element to it. The fact that this sits on my lead arm and feels super, super stable has made me pick this putter up quite a lot since it's been sat in my office. Um, it does make me feel pretty comfortable with it. I fiddled with my grip a little bit at the start, like we talked about there at the beginning, but the fact that it's locked on my lead arm, it does just make me think it feels really nice, really quite solid. You do have to get used to the idea of having the shaft leaning forwards because it's not like a regular putter. It's not like my putter, which we'll show you in a second, where it all sits neutral. If it, sits, if it stands neutral here, you see loads of loft. What happens if you've got to have it forwards for it to pair up with this lead arm? So it's like having a lot of shaft lean, basically. Um, that did take a little bit of getting used to, and then it also takes a bit of getting used to where I point the face in relationship to this shaft angle, because they're normally things Say so here with my putter, that I line up. If I put shaft lean in, back or forward, you can start seeing the face starts moving around. So it took a bit of time to try and get used to having the shaft forward and then having that face turned, what to me felt basically closed. But it's not when you start kind of reassessing those lines in your head. And then the more I picked it up, I just felt like I was able to hold putts with it. I was able to perform with it. So what I've done, and we'll kick off with this, is I was so intrigued with how nice it felt, I got my sand putt lab out and I spent a day measuring my putter v the arm lock to see if there physically was any difference in how that putter was swinging and moving as I moved it around my body. Let's show you the results. So this really interests me. I was shocked how similar, if not exactly the same, my strokes were. It had no bearing on my six foot putt, putting stroke. It was the same direction, angle of attacks. The face was pretty much within a tolerance of very similar to my regular putter to the arm lock. It felt different, but the measured difference 
wasn't there. So who might it be there for? Let's carry on watching and testing. You might find that there are people who would benefit from this arm lock design. So what is it that feels so different with it then? What is it that makes me feel more comfortable? Well, having that fixed point, that anchored point, did allow me to do some other things with my stroke. It allowed me to look forwards more when I putted, so almost on a midpoint on my line, and not even worry about what was going on with the putter because I could feel the stroke moving against my lead arm. So if you're anyone who's ever experimented with maybe looking at the holder putt like Jordan Spieth did for a long or early part of his career that we used to watch on telly, it's something that you might think of doing. Like it did give me that security of knowing the putt was moving because it did have that touch point. The next thing by having that contact point is it does allow me to not really worry about my stroke in any way. It doesn't feel like it's going to break down. It doesn't feel like there's gonna be a wobble. And I think this is the main point and where we start touching on who this putter really could benefit. If you're someone who has a distinct wobble with one hand or the other, certainly if it's your trail, bottom hand, right hand for me in this instance, if I had any kind of little wobbles going on, obviously by having this locked, well, it, it can't really happen. It has to come away. It gives you an alarm bell. It gives you a warning system. So I do think if you are someone who has a few wobbling issues with your putting, you might find that the arm lock does give you some security and might even limit the wobble. And where we didn't see it really play through for me is because my putter, I wouldn't particularly say I have a wobble with it. I don't feel insecure. I feel quite confident with it. This just felt as confident as that one, maybe a slightly more, but then obviously when I took it through to the test and I could see that it was so similar, I was able to really see that it is just a feel-based thing. And that's not to say that's not enough and not a reason for you to buy a new putter and feel obviously is a massive thing of what might make you change your decisions on what putter you want to putt with. Should we have a look at some of the tech that goes into this Cobra one? Because out of any of the arm lock ideas I've seen out there. And I think this is driven by the fact that you've got this kind of flagship player playing this putter. Um, I think he's really quite clever and quite smart when it comes to arm lock, is if something were a direction you'd want to go. This would certainly be at the forefront of my testing group because it is made by someone and with someone really who's using it to win tournaments. And as you'll see from the tech, in off, there is plenty of thought and love that has gone in to this putter. So the arm lock putter, it's a 41 inch setup. So you get the longer setup with the specialized grip to allow you to get your arm and hand connected onto it. It features Cobra's SIK face technology. So it's like a rounded face that allows you to get the similar kind of launches and spin rate subject to where you might strike that ball on the face. It's also the 3D printed head design allowing them to move weights, increase MOIs, put weights in the place you need it to try and make sure you keep that ball speed consistent across the face, which will help you with pace control when you're not quite striking it in that exact spot. And don't forget, like Cobra have done for a long time now, you get Arcos in the top of the grip as well. If you want to collect stats to just see how good your putter is, if it is an improvement, on the putter before. It's packed with pretty good and impressive Cobra tech. So could I use the arm lock? Is it something I would change to over my regular putter? Well, yeah, it is something I would consider, but for me, I would have to be having any kind of issues for it to be a consideration. Because this is a slightly silly thing, but it's still a thing, it's heavy. And it, if I'm carrying this around in a golf bag, it's a pain in the bum. It sticks out and it has a lot of weight. Like, unless my putting is any better, I don't want extra weight in my golf bag. But if I was anyone who had any kind of issues with wobbles with my putting, and I couldn't fix it with conventional, and this in some way did help you reduce the amount of twitches or wobbles that you have in your stroke, I wouldn't think twice. I would just get, well, have a trolley or get a car each time I play. 
Yeah, get some, get a caddy for my pudder, maybe. Because it has to be said, having it locked joint up my lead arm does just feel really, really quite stable and nice. I play golf with people who could definitely benefit from trying one of these to see if it changes what they do with their twitches around their putting. When it comes to the 3D printed, it's all fun. I like it, it but it's not going to be the be all and end all of me buying this putter. Um, I do like the shape, even though I think lots of people might want some different shapes. I mean, it's really this is what you're buying into. I wouldn't say this particularly is the most groundbreaking thing ever in shape wise, but it's nice. Face, I think, is clever. The difference that would make for people hitting at different angles has some benefits, I think. If you test it over time, you might see some results on some distance control. Again, it has to be said, I do love the way Cobra really at the minute are one of the only companies out there who are really trying to shift the needle. They're not playing it safe. They are trying to make equipment that helps and they're not afraid to innovate and innovate and bring to market. Oh, that's a push. I wobbled then look and that's key i think you know to actually do something which is so different but then actually try and get it into loads of golfers hands is brave and something i would say cobra aren't really being kind of rewarded for maybe at the moment or recognized enough for at the moment they certainly are not afraid to mix it up out there in a industry that phew, has a lot of players doesn't it i think for, the thing for me which is the real kind of seal of approval as a testing item is if I was coaching all day certain lots of putting lessons seeing people who wanted to improve their putting even people who struggle with their putting like I wouldn't not have one of these in my armory for them to test I absolutely would have one of these couple of these for people to test because I do think there are certain demographics it's going to make no difference me being particularly one of those apart from me really dialing into whatever the word feel means and liking the feel of it but there'll be other demographics i think who will really benefit really really benefit and those people with the odd twitch the odd right hand lower hand kind of wobble even the left hand lead hand wobble ideas it's just not going to happen as much as certainly not as easy and you could certainly find a grip out of the many ways you could hold this putter that really allows you to hopefully stabilize how you move that that's a really good putter and there isn't many bits of golf equipment coming out in the modern era that really do change your ideas and this one has the potential to again in the comments i am really interested to understand what your thoughts are on banning this or not now i'm not a big fan of banning stuff i think golf's hard enough as it is and it seems to be a bit of an old secretary stiff collared kind of boring you know all burn everything that's just all wear jackets and ties still and so up kind of thing which in golf is just you know it's just awful does it make it easier well it didn't for me will it make it easier for some well yes it does but then you could argue 12 degrees of bounce over two degrees or six degrees of bounce makes it easier for some people as well you could argue that a 13 degree driver over a seven degree driver for certain demographics makes it easier and harder what do you think it the thing I don't understand when it comes to the banning part is it, I understand the rule of anchoring. You don't need to say that it's a fixed point in the comments, I get that. But having a fixed point that still moves, it does feel like anchoring. Like if you're gonna ban anchoring, so whichever way you wanna do it, in the chest, in the tummy, under the chin, like good old Sam Torrance, um, then I do struggle to see how this isn't banned as well. But at the same time, I wasn't really fussed that people had anchored putters either. I was happy for them to keep doing it. Like, if more people play and enjoy it over a longer period of time and don't fall out of golf because putting becomes an impossible conundrum, ugh, that's a good thing, isn't it? Sometimes the rules of golf just seem to want to hate on the people it's trying to sell the game to. A fraction. <laughs>